Thank you. Professor Cole, what do you think? Well, a subsiding of violence in Iraq, generally speaking, would certainly uh, affect the image of, of Muslims in the United States. Because, as I said, those incidents of violence are covered uh, uh, especially, and one hears very little other news from Iraq but how many people were killed today in such and such bombing. Uh, were uh, social peace to return to Iraq over time, I think that uh, people would start thinking differently about Muslims and Islam. Uh, yes, I agree with the proposition. Okay. You. you wanted to say something? Quickly? Yeah, just something simple. Um, before Al Qaeda, before bin Laden, before Sunni Shia conflict in Iraq, um, again, I have to say there was a large swathe of Western opinion that thought that Islam was a violent religion. It's very deep rooted within uh, the way that, uh, that history is taught about the Muslim world in the West. Uh, this is unfortunate. This is something that needs to be changed, but it has to be done gradually and has to be done with the highest uh, standards of academic scholarship. We'll take a question from the third row, the lady there. Thank you. Um, actually, my question is to Dr. Hisham. You mentioned that extremists are more likely to get their time, you know, in media on television. Can you, okay, can you really say that that doesn't impact people who are watching the news? No, no, I totally agree with what you just said, but that's not really what I'm debating here tonight. I don't disagree that extremists on the airwaves contribute to a bad image of Islam. My, uh, Even if they're my, Sunni and Shia extremists? even if the Sunni Shia extremists, because the Sunni extremists attack the Sunnis just as often, if not more, than the Shia, and the Shia extremists attack the Shia just as often, if not more, than the Sunnis. But extremists don't you feel what's happening right now with the Sunni and the Shias is perpetuating that negative view on Islam in terms of it not being I really don't, um, I really don't think peaceful? the viewers are sophisticated enough to know as much as you do uh, when, they watch the, when they watch the media, when they see an extremist, I with all, you, and all I think they that's know is insulting people who watch, you know, who are, I, I just disagree with you. I think that if you look at the polls, people really don't know the difference between a Sunni and a Shia. All they will see Whether is Whether they an not extremist. know, but that's all they see. No, so. but that's my point. All they see, all they put in terms of a label is a Muslim extremist. Okay, so they does really that not have a negative view on how people look at Islam? Certainly does, but that's not the, that's not the question. Is the, well, the question is, Shia this conflict. house believes that the Sunni-Shia conflict has damaged Islam's reputation as a religion of peace. That is the issue. But that's, that's not the, the question the lady is asking. But really, that's what I'm asking. So whether it's what transmitted asking. through media or whatever, that's what's currently happening, and that's what the focus is, is right now in the media. So is that not... Whether, whatever way you want to look at it, is it really not creating a negative impact on how people view Islam? No, I think that the extremists that people see on their television screens are definitely not promoting uh, a positive image of Islam for everybody around the world, but that really those extremists focus uh, their anger and target their hatred on everybody. We're going to take a question from the gentleman up there, please. Uh, we as Muslims know Islam is a religion of peace. Why are we terribly worried about the image of Islam in Western media? Um, other religions are not terribly worried about their image in our media. Imam Kazwini. Uh, I think we need to be worried about the image of Islam, not in the media. I don't care much about the media because I know the motives in the media and I know that the media is biased. But I'm uh, worried, for example, about 300 million Americans who live in the United States who do not know much about Islam. I am worried about them, that I don't want them to think that Islam is a religion of... Who get their news from the media? Well, then we can rely on other sources. That's why I say that Muslims have to find other ways to educate non-Muslims about their faith, not necessarily through the media. We should not underestimate the role of the media. It was the media who started a big war next door to us here. Never yeah. underestimate the role of the media and its effect on the people who do not know. Which war did the media start next door? Two, three, the Iraq war that was played through the media all along. Started by the media? I think the White House had a hand in it, didn't it? Yeah. 
the, the, the White House owned the media, for God's sake. <laughs> I think they might argue with that. All right, we're going to take a question from the lady in the, at the end of the row there. Yes, you. Good evening. Um, listening to the debate this evening, I see a lot of focus on Western media, Western interpretation, Western perception. Do you think we should be all asking more questions about what are the Arabs and the Muslims in general doing to address the reasons behind the friction, the violence, the extremism, the fanaticism? And let's, let's not forget, violence between Muslims and Muslims has started way back before Iraq. You know, a lot of it happened in Algeria before America went into Iraq and in Asia, etc. Should we be Imam looking Kazwini. at tribal to... mentality maybe? Should we be looking at education? Should we be looking at political leaders? Should we be looking at Arab leaders? Should we be looking at Muslim leaders? Should we, should we have an answer to that? <laughs> Thank you very much. Before the list gets any longer. Thank you. Imam uh, I, I admit that Muslims and Arabs take a big responsibility for not working hard for reconciliation. I believe that they need to do more in reigning in the extremists. I, I believe that the Muslim governments are responsible for not uh, taking the right measurements in, in, in uh, removing the incentives for the extremists to thrive in the Muslim community. So I believe that we, yes, we take some part of the responsibility. I, I think in terms of education, education is where everything starts. Um, and I think that there's a lot more to be done within the Arab world, within the broader Muslim world, and we have to remember the Arab world is actually just 20% of the whole Muslim world. Um, in terms of the other examples that you brought up, the violence in Algeria um, and so on, if the motion were uh, Muslim on Muslim violence, I'd be much more partial to agreeing with my opponents. But it's, on Sun it's Sunni Shia violence, and that's why I sit here and I disagree. General Shukri, very brief comment, very brief. Uh, I, believe, I believe that there is a very important issue here that one must pay attention to. The failure, the failure of the Arab political system, the Arab parties from the Nasser's days to the Arab nationalism, to the Ba'athists, to the Arab communists, pushed people towards religion. Now, within these new religious parties, some were extreme, some were ultra-extreme, etc. Now, we will need a long time before this is stabilized and gone back to normal. This is why all the Arab countries, all the Muslim countries, Arab countries in general, are out rushing to modify, to modify the, between right. brackets their, their educational system. Okay, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the point in the proceedings. We're going to vote on the motion that this House believes that the Sunni-Shia conflict has damaged Islam's reputation as a religion of peace. Would you please take your voting machines if you want to vote for the motion, that is the side represented by Professor Cole and General Shukri, would you press button one, the yellow button? If you want to vote against the motion, that is the side represented by Imam Kazwini and Hisham Helia, would you press button two, the red button, and would you please do that now? So there's the results coming up on the screen. 39% for the motion, 61% against. The motion has been resoundingly rejected. Or just remains for me to thank our distinguished speakers for coming here tonight. You've come a long way. We're very grateful for seeing you. And thank you very much to you, the audience, as well. The Doha debates will be back again, God willing, next month. Till then, from all of us on the team, have a safe journey home. Good night. Thank you.